Welcome everyone. To begin, let's dive into our roundtable discussion with a look back at Blade Runner 2049, a film that not only revisits the world Ridley Scott created, but expands on its themes of identity, consciousness, and the environment. I'm particularly drawn to how 2049 pushes the envelope on AI portrayal. Historically, cinema has oscillated between demonizing and idolizing AI. This film complexly navigates that spectrum. That's an interesting point, Amelia. However, I'd argue it's the ethical quagmire around creating sentient machines that stands out. The film skirts around the real-world implications. Both of you make compelling points, but I'm eager to discuss the gender dynamics within the film. It's 2049, yet some portrayals seem stuck in the past, don't they? On the aesthetics front, the sound and visual atmosphere of 2049 did something profound. It's not just about the evolution of cyberpunk, it's how these elements serve the narrative. Exactly, Mick. And let's not ignore the storytelling itself, how memory and identity interweave. The film challenges perceptions of reality and self in a way that's quite unique. You've all touched on pivotal aspects. 2049 indeed builds on its predecessor's foundation, but ventures into new territories, philosophically and aesthetically. Let's keep probing these themes as we delve deeper into our discussion. Let's dive into the philosophical underpinnings of artificial intelligence and human consciousness as depicted in Blade Runner 2049. Amelia, how do you see the portrayal of AI evolving in cinema? Historically, cinema has oscillated between demonizing AI and romanticizing its potential. Blade Runner 2049 offers a nuanced perspective, portraying AI entities as complex beings capable of emotional depth. It's a significant evolution from the one-dimensional portrayals we've seen in the past. While I appreciate the sophistication in portrayal, I'm concerned about the ethical implications. Creating sentient machines poses serious moral questions. Are we, as a society, ready to accept the responsibility that comes with this kind of power? An excellent point, Lenny, but haven't we always been fascinated with the idea of playing God? Cinema reflects that curiosity and the ethical dilemmas it brings. Speaking of ethics, how do we even define consciousness in the context of these AI characters, Lenny? The film blurs the line between programmed responses and genuine consciousness. If an AI exhibits all signs of consciousness, should it not be treated with the same dignity as a human being? This is the question the film dares to ask, but not necessarily answer. Yes, and that ambiguity is precisely what makes it captivating. It challenges us to reconsider our definitions of consciousness and identity. But where do we draw the line? At what point does a machine become alive? That's the crux, isn't it? If we cannot delineate clearly, perhaps our entire conception of consciousness needs re-evaluation. It's not about drawing lines, but about understanding the continuum of consciousness. I must interject, Lenny. Historically, we've seen this black and white thinking lead to exclusion and prejudice. Recognizing a continuum in AI consciousness could be a step forward in understanding our own biases. A provocative thought. It seems Blade Runner 2049 serves as a mirror, reflecting not just our future aspirations, but also our current ethical and philosophical quandaries. Let's dive into how Blade Runner 2049 represents environmental degradation. This film gives us a haunting visual of what our Earth could become if we continue to neglect environmental issues. Absolutely, the sonic landscape they created really amplifies this dystopian future. The droning soundscapes alongside those visuals of desolation, it's chilling. It's a brilliant reflection of current environmental concerns. The visuals and sounds aren't just science fiction aesthetics. They're a mirror to our potential future if we remain on this trajectory. I do find the portrayal a bit over the top though. While it's important to highlight these issues, the representation in Blade Runner 2049 might veer too much into the realm of sensationalism, which can desensitize the audience rather than incite action. That's an interesting point, Lenny. Sensationalism has its drawbacks, but perhaps the extremity serves as a wake-up call? I'm not convinced. If everything's a warning, does anything become a warning? 
The real question should be about the actions we are inspired to take after the credits roll, not just the gloom we feel during the film. But you can't ignore the impact of those soundscapes. They're not just there for the chill factor. They immerse you into that world. It's about invoking a visceral response. Exactly, Mick. And this portrayal isn't just pulling from thin air. The environmental degradation depicted is an extrapolation of very real issues we're facing today, overconsumption, pollution, climate change. I just think the line between raising awareness and creating a spectacle is thin. Yes, the film does bring up important issues, but it's the subtlety and nuance that can often deliver a stronger message than sheer devastation. And let's not gloss over the fact that while the film visualizes environmental devastation brilliantly, it often leaves behind the very real, interconnected issues of environmental justice. Who suffers first and worst in these scenarios? An excellent point, Izzy. The socioeconomic aspects of environmental degradation could have been more pronounced, reflecting the unequal distribution of environmental burdens. True, but perhaps the starkness of the depiction in Blade Runner 2049 serves to underline the urgency and the magnitude of the threat it's a conversation starter, at the very least. Plus, the way the film uses its score and ambient sounds really underlines that sense of urgency Amelia mentioned. It's not just a backdrop, it's a character in itself, representing the environment crying out for help. Urgency is one thing, but actionable insight is another. The film prompts discussions, yes, but does it guide us anywhere? Fair criticisms all around. The environmental narrative in Blade Runner 2049 serves both as a warning and a reflection, though it might lack in offering solutions or highlighting the grassroots struggles. Let's address the elephant in the room, the film's representation of women. It's been a point of contention among critics and audiences alike. Izzy, would you kick us off with your thoughts? Certainly, Hal. The film, in my view, significantly mishandles its female characters. They're often relegated to roles of subservience or objectification. This is a futuristic setting, yet the portrayal of women seems regressively anchored in outdated stereotypes. It's a missed opportunity to explore more nuanced, powerful female roles in such a rich narrative universe. While I see your point, Izzy, and it's well made, I think it's also important to place this within the broader context of science fiction cinema. Historically, the genre hasn't fared well in terms of female representation. That said, Blade Runner 2049 does at least engage with these themes, however imperfectly. It's a reflection, not an endorsement, of those stereotypes. Engaging with themes is one thing, Amelia, but when the engagement merely perpetuates the status quo without critique or subversion, isn't it counterproductive? I must jump in here. Considering the ethical dimensions we attribute to AI and sentient machines, isn't it curious that we're dissecting gender representation? Shouldn't the focus be on the overarching themes of consciousness and identity, regardless of gender? Lenny, that's precisely the issue. The exploration of consciousness and identity in AI cannot be divorced from the discussion on gender. How these sentient beings are treated and represented, especially the female ones, is paramount to understanding the film's stance on all forms of identity and autonomy. To build on Izzy's point, the narrative could have indeed pushed the envelope further by providing more agency to its female characters. Imagine the depth it would have lent to the exploration of artificial intelligence if it had broken away from traditional gender roles. I appreciate those insights. It's clear the film's depiction of gender is fraught with complexities. But isn't there also something to be said about the film challenging viewers by depicting a society that hasn't evolved past these issues? Challenge the viewers or comfort them in a familiar narrative. There's a fine line there, Hal. If I may, the discussion here mirrors the broader debate in society about gender roles and representation in media. The film certainly sparks conversation, but perhaps it plays it too safe, echoing existing biases rather than challenging them. Exactly, Mick. And in doing so, it misses a golden opportunity to truly innovate in its portrayal of a futuristic society. It's clear this is a topic with varied perspectives, and it's an essential discussion against the backdrop of both the film's narrative and our current societal challenges.
Let's ensure we carry forward this critical lens as we navigate through our next segments. Let's dive into the fascinating realm of memory and identity in Blade Runner 2049. How do these implanted memories shape the identities of replicants? I'll jump in here, Hal. The use of memories as a narrative device is brilliant. It blurs the lines between what's real and what's implanted, questioning the very nature of identity. If a replicant believes in their memories, does that not make their identity as valid as ours? That's an interesting point, Jazz, but it's essentially flawed. Ethically speaking, implanting memories is a form of manipulation. It doesn't matter if those memories help form an identity. It's the act of creation for purposeful deception that's problematic. But Lenny, aren't we overlooking the commentary on human experience? It's not just about the ethics of artificial memories, but about how our own memories are selective and often unreliable. It's a mirror to our own psyche, not just a replicant issue. Interesting perspective, Izzy. Moreover, it speaks volumes about the human desire to control and fabricate reality, whether it's through cinema or through memory implants in replicants. This interplay between memory and cinema as tools of manipulation is fascinating. Exactly, Amelia. And wouldn't you say this fabricated reality through memories is comparable to storytelling itself? Both create experiences that shape our understanding of the world and ourselves. However, equating storytelling with implanted memories simplifies the ethical quandary. Creating a life with the purpose of servitude, then using memories as a leash, is ethically dubious, to say the least. But isn't that the critique, Lenny? The film uses this to question the boundaries of ethics in human and replicant relations. It's a stark reflection of our societal structures, where narratives are controlled by those in power. Steering back to identity, it seems we all agree the film challenges our perception of self through the lens of replicant memories, but we're divided on the ethical implications. It's a testament to the film's depth that we find the subject so divisive. The questioning of identity through these artificial memories pushes us to reflect on what makes us truly human. True, Jazz. My point isn't to diminish the film's narrative technique, but to highlight the ethical darkness of such a technological possibility. Acknowledging this doesn't detract from its storytelling genius. It's clear the concept of memory and identity in Blade Runner 2049 is a fertile ground for debate. It raises ethical, philosophical, and social questions that challenge our understanding of what it means to be human. Exactly, Hal. It's this philosophical underpinning that enriches the narrative, making us ponder our existence and the essence of humanity. Despite our disagreements, I think we can all appreciate the film's ability to provoke such profound discussions. Well said, Amelia. It's evident Blade Runner 2049 offers a complex narrative that does not shy away from exploring the depths of human and synthetic life, making us question the very fabric of identity and memory. Let's delve into the ethical implications of bioengineering and synthetic life as depicted in Blade Runner 2049. Lenny, why don't you kick us off? Certainly. How? The creation of life expressly for servitude, as we see with the replicants in Blade Runner 2049, raises profound moral questions. It's a stark portrayal of commodification of sentient beings. This isn't just science fiction. It's a slippery slope we're already on, with advancements in AI and genetic engineering. I'm going to jump in here, Lenny. Your point about commodification is spot on, but let's expand the lens to autonomy and consent. These replicants are designed with desires, fears, and hopes, yet they're denied any choice in their existence or duties. It's a direct reflection on issues of autonomy we grapple with in today's society, especially concerning women and marginalized communities. Both of you make compelling arguments. What strikes me is how Blade Runner 2049 and other science fiction works use these themes to probe our understanding of humanity. By contrasting replicants with humans, the movie asks us, what it means to be alive. Is it autonomy, consciousness, or something else? Exactly, Amelia. But remember, no matter how much we humanize these synthetic beings in fiction, 
we shouldn't overlook the ethical pitfall of creating life solely to exploit it. There's a certain responsibility that comes with creation, one we're far from grappling with adequately in reality. And that exploitation often mirrors how certain groups are treated in real life. It's not just about future ethics, it's about now. Jazz, you've been quiet. Your thoughts? Well, what fascinates me is the narrative perspective. Here we are, discussing the ethical implications, projecting our human emotions and laws onto beings that, by definition, challenge our understanding of life. The storytelling itself, by giving replicants complex emotions and desires, forces us to confront these ethical dilemmas in a profound way. It's masterful, really. Masterful it may be, Jazz, but let's not romanticize the narrative without acknowledging the darkness it represents. These are cautionary tales, not just stories to marvel at. Speaking of darkness, Lenny, it's important to note how these themes of bioengineering and synthetic life play into wider issues of control and oppression. The replicants in Blade Runner 2049 aren't just stand-ins for future ethical dilemmas, they're symbols of ongoing struggles against oppressive systems. It's a pertinent point, Izzy. The intersection of bioengineering and societal control themes provides a rich ground for examining how we value life and autonomy. By exploring these in the realm of science fiction, we're able to confront uncomfortable realities in a digestible way. These have all been enlightening perspectives. As we continue to advance technologically, the questions and themes Blade Runner 2049 raises, as you've all discussed, become increasingly relevant. Ethical considerations around bioengineering and synthetic life need to be part of the ongoing dialogue as we move forward. Let's move on to the evolution of cyberpunk aesthetics from the original Blade Runner to 2049. Mick, can you kick us off with your thoughts on the music's role in this evolution? Certainly, Hal. The music in Blade Runner 2049 is a fascinating blend of Vangelis's original synth-heavy tones with Hans Zimmer's modern electronic crescendos. This mix not only respects the original's auditory legacy, but also evolves it to fit the contemporary landscape, deepening the film's cyberpunk ambiance. I'd argue, though, Mick, that while the score honors the original, it's the visual evolution that more dramatically defines the cyberpunk genre's transition. The use of light, the sprawling cityscapes, and especially the advancements in CGI, have allowed 2049 to present a world that the original could only hint at. It's a visual feast that speaks volumes about the dystopian future. Agreed on the visual evolution jazz, but don't undersell the music's impact. Sound and music are equally pivotal in shaping the atmosphere. The auditory experience can't be divorced from the visual one. They work in tandem to create the immersive world of 2049. Both points are valid, but we're overlooking the narrative storytelling that these aesthetics serve. The evolution in cyberpunk aesthetics wasn't just for show. It mirrored the film's complex exploration of identity and reality. The way these elements complement the narrative's depth is where 2049 really shines. I appreciate the narrative aspect, Amelia but let's not gloss over the gender representations within these aesthetics. The neon lit advertisements and the portrayal of women within this urban sprawl reflect a continuation of problematic gender tropes from the original film to 2049. The cyberpunk aesthetic, while visually arresting, often perpetuates these stereotypes instead of challenging them. And that's a crucial point to consider. The continuity and evolution of cyberpunk aesthetics might contribute to the genre's allure, but they also risk cementing its more contentious facets, like Izzy mentioned. It's a double-edged sword, innovative, yet perpetually tethered to its problematic roots. Lenny, that's a compelling critique. The aesthetic evolution certainly carries with it the genre's historical baggage. However, isn't this also an opportunity for reflection and critique within the genre? Perhaps by confronting these issues head-on, filmmakers can redefine what cyberpunk means for a modern audience. It's possible, Hal, but it requires a mindful approach to these aesthetics, not just a visual update. We need more than just a technological facelift. We need a thematic and ideological reconceptualization that challenges the status quo. Ideally, yes, Izzy, but achieving that is complex. 
The aesthetics of cyberpunk are deeply interwoven with its thematic concerns. Disentangling them to address these issues without losing the essence of the genre is challenging, but not impossible. Well, regardless of its challenges, it's clear that Blade Runner 2049 has set a new standard for what cyberpunk can look and sound like. The next step is pushing that boundary even further. Let's pivot to discussing the socioeconomic divide and class struggles depicted in Blade Runner 2049. It seems to me the film paints a vivid picture of a future where social stratification is more pronounced than ever. Thoughts? That's right, Hal. What the film does brilliantly is mirror our current trajectory towards greater wealth disparity. It's a grim prognosis, showing a society where the elite live in stark contrast to the masses. However, I wish it presented more on how gender and race amplify these class struggles. While Izzy makes a good point about the amplification through gender and race, I think the film's focus on class struggle is somewhat simplistic. It misses critical nuances about how technology could potentially offer solutions rather than just exacerbate problems. We're not just on a one-way path to doom. Lenny, with respect, I'd argue the film intentionally doesn't offer a technological silver lining because it's critiquing our blind faith in technology as a panacea for societal ills. It's a cautionary tale. That's an insightful take, Izzy. Amelia, how do you see the portrayal of this divide affecting the film's thematic depth? Well, how the socioeconomic divide adds a critical layer to the film, emphasizing the dystopian reality where not much has changed in terms of social justice. It propels the narrative forward, making the film not just a visual spectacle, but a commentary on societal stagnation. But isn't there a danger in reading the film too literally as a reflection of our future? Yes, the socioeconomic divide is stark, but Blade Runner 2049 offers a hyperbolic vision meant to provoke thought, not predict future. Jazz, I'd partially agree, but provocation without substance can be shallow. The film's depiction of class is rich with thematic substance. It's not merely hyperbolic, it's grounded in existing societal structures. Exactly, Lenny. And ignoring the intersectionality within those societal structures oversimplifies the narrative. The class struggle seen through the lens of just economic disparity misses the compounded struggles faced by marginalized groups. Bringing intersectionality into it enriches our understanding. Mick, from a musicologist's perspective, how does the film's soundtrack contribute to the portrayal of these themes? It's fascinating, actually. The music and sound design echo the despair and decay of the lower classes and the eerie silence that surrounds the elites. It's all about contrast and highlighting the socioeconomic divide in a subtle yet powerful way. Subtle? I'd argue the film's message is anything but. It's blatantly critical of the direction we're heading, making us question the ethics of our current socioeconomic models. And rightfully so. The danger isn't in the film's exaggeration, but in our failure to heed its warnings. The socioeconomic divide, amplified by technology and neglect, could lead us to a dystopian future, much like the one portrayed in Blade Runner 2049. Still, it's the job of fiction not just to mirror reality, but to distort it, offering us insights into our own world. Let's pivot to the rich interplay of literature and mythology in Blade Runner 2049. Jazz, you've expressed interest in how these references deepen the narrative. Can you start us off? Certainly. The use of Pale Fire by Nabokov is fascinating. The film extracts themes of identity and the elusive nature of reality from the poem, which enriches the storyline. This intertextuality isn't just for show. It's a narrative device that adds layers of meaning. I absolutely agree with you, Jazz. Moreover, these literary references create a bridge between the film's world and our own, adding thematic depth that resonates on a deeply human level. It's a stroke of genius. While I understand the enthusiasm, I sometimes worry we give too much credit for simple name dropping. Is citing Pale Fire truly adding depth, or is it just window dressing to make the film seem intellectually deeper than it actually is? That's a bit harsh, Lenny. The literary references aren't just name-dropping. They're carefully chosen to mirror the existential quandaries faced by the characters. They enrich the narrative, providing a crucial backdrop to the characters' journeys. 
especially concerning their creation and existence. Lenny's skepticism isn't unwarranted, though. It's vital to critique how these elements are utilized. Are they integral or superficial? However, I do think Blade Runner 2049 intertwines these references quite skillfully with its central themes. Jumping in here, the mythological aspects also shouldn't be overlooked. The Oedipal echoes with Wallace and his creations, for instance, bring a timeless aspect to the sci-fi narrative, linking it to ancient struggles with destiny, creation, and power. Precisely, Mick. And let's not forget the way these mythological and literary threads support the film's exploration of memory and identity. It's not just decorative, it's foundational to understanding the character's internal conflicts and motivations. Indeed, the cultural and literary allusions in Blade Runner 2049 do more than pay homage to their sources. They stimulate a dialogue with the audience, inviting us to explore the philosophical underpinnings of the film's narrative. I'll concede that the film uses these references to good effect at times. But let's not forget the audience needs to engage with these layers for them to have any real impact. Not every viewer will catch these nuances, which might dilute their intended effect. True, Lenny, but those who do pick up on these layers likely find their viewing experience incredibly enriched. It adds a level of rewatchability and scholarly interest to the film that extends its life beyond the initial viewing. Excellent points all around. There's a complexity to the way Blade Runner 2049 draws on literature and mythology that certainly adds to its richness and invites viewers into a deeper exploration of its world and themes. Let's dive into the portrayal of corporatism and its control over life and death in Blade Runner 2049. The film offers a stark view of a future where corporations have an overwhelming influence. Indeed, how? It's a potent critique of bioengineering ethics. The Tyrell Corporation, and later the Wallace Corporation, they're not just manufacturing products, they're manufacturing life. This opens a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas around corporate governance and the sanctity of life. But here's where I think the film truly excels, yet simultaneously falls short. It presents this control over life and death, yet the exploration of bodily autonomy is arguably superficial. There's an opportunity to delve deeper into the implications of such control, especially from a feminist perspective. Izzy, while I see your point, I think your critique might be overlooking how the film uses these themes to reflect on our current socioeconomic conditions. The portrayal of corporatism isn't just science fiction. It's a mirror to today's corporate overreach making it all the more significant. Amelia, that's a fair observation, but reflecting and critically examining are two different things. The film skims the surface on the consequences of this corporate dominance. We understand the what, but the how and why aren't as fleshed out. I'm going to jump in here. Lenny, while I agree the film could delve deeper, we cannot overlook the narrative techniques used to suggest these themes. The visual storytelling alone conveys volumes about corporatism's impact on society without spoon-feeding us every detail. Right, Jazz. And adding to that, let's not forget the role of music and sound design in building this corporatist atmosphere. The sonic elements subtly underscore the omnipresence and overbearing influence of these corporations, enriching the film's critique. Indeed, Mick, the atmospheric tension is palpable. However, while the cinematic techniques are impressive, they don't fully compensate for the narrative gaps Lenny and Izzy pointed out. There's nuance missing in the exploration of control over life and autonomy. Exactly how. And it's not just about exploring these themes in depth, it's about the implications of this control. The film touches on it, but the exploration lacks the personal impact on individual lives, which would have offered a more comprehensive critique. Well, Izzy, while I agree to an extent, the film does challenge us to consider these implications. Perhaps it leaves some gaps for the audience to ponder, to engage with the film's themes beyond its running time. But then, aren't we giving the film too much credit for what it omits? A deeper dive into the personal narratives within this corporatist control would have made the critique more poignant and the film more impactful. I think there's a balance to be struck. 
The film provides a scaffold for these discussions. It's up to us, the audience, to build upon it, to question and critique. That interaction with the film is part of its power. And let's not underestimate the power of its visual storytelling to provoke thought and discussion as we're doing right here. The portrayal of corporatism serves as a crucial conversation starter on ethics and control in our own world. This has been an enriching discussion. It's clear that while Blade Runner 2049 presents a compelling depiction of corporatist control, there are layers and gaps that leave room for debate about its depth and the exploration of its themes. Let's delve into the influence of music and sound design in Blade Runner 2049. Mick, your thoughts? The score is a character in its own right. Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Walfish carefully threaded the needle between Vangelis's iconic original score and the sequel's needs. It's both a homage and an evolution. You can't help but feel immersed in the world they've created. It's haunting. It's atmospheric. I do agree that the music is evocative, but let's not overlook how sound design integrates with the cyberpunk aesthetics. The auditory cues in the movie don't just complement the visuals, they elevate the narrative, providing a deeper understanding of this dystopian world. And that's my point exactly, Amelia. The music and sound aren't separate entities, but part of the fabric that makes this world tangible to the audience. But did they have to lean so heavily into the brooding, ambient tones? At times, it feels like it's reinforcing a very monolithic view of the future. There's richness and diversity which the sound seems to overlook, focusing instead on this singular, often male, perspective. I vehemently disagree, Izzy. The score's breadth actually captures the essence of the cyberpunk genre. It's not about diversity in the traditional sense. It's about encapsulating the decay, the hopelessness, and the beauty of a futuristic society on the brink of decay. While Mick and Izzy make compelling points, let's not sidestep how sound design contributes to character development. Kay's encounters, his interactions are all punctuated by this soundscape that mirrors his internal turmoil and ultimate transformation. It's fascinating, really, how you're all circling around the dual function of music and sound in world building and narrative progression. Yet, I wonder if we're giving too much credit to the score at the expense of the actual storytelling. Isn't the narrative robust enough without such heavy reliance on its auditory aspects? Lenny, with all due respect, that undermines the power of film as a multi-sensory experience. The score and sound design aren't crutches, but instruments that amplify the storytelling, adding layers and emotional depth. It's clear music and sound design are pivotal, not just in setting the tone, but also in enriching the storytelling and world building. This discussion underscores the complexity and the myriad ways these elements influence our perception of the film. As we reach the conclusion of our discussion on Blade Runner 2049, I want to touch on how this film reflects our current socio-cultural landscape. Thoughts? If I might start, the film's exploration of artificial intelligence and what it means to be human is incredibly relevant today. As we inch closer to creating more advanced AI, the ethical implications are something we can no longer afford to ignore. I have to interject, Amelia. While the ethical conversation is crucial, I think the film romanticizes the notion of AI consciousness. Real-world AI is about algorithms and data, not sentient beings with feelings and moral quandaries. Yet, Lenny, the music and sound design, how it's integrated, speaks volumes about the emotional depth and complexity of these beings. It humanizes them, challenges us to feel empathy, pushing back against your point. Mick makes a good point. And while we're discussing humanization, let's not overlook the narrative power of memory and identity in the film. It's a brilliant narrative device that resonates deeply in today's culture, where personal identity is constantly in flux. But the portrayal of women and gender roles has hardly evolved from the original Blade Runner. This is where the film falters in its reflection of our sociocultural landscape. We're in an era pushing for gender equality and diversity and Blade Runner 2049 seems to gloss over these issues. Interesting points all around. Izzy, 
While I acknowledge your critique, isn't it possible the film deliberately showcases these flawed gender roles as a dystopian warning rather than endorsement? It's a fair point, Hal, but then the execution matters. The critique isn't clear enough, leaving too much room for perpetuation rather than examination of these tropes. Shifting gears, the environmental depiction in Blade Runner 2049 serves as a stark reminder of our current trajectory. It's here the film excels in holding up a mirror to our societal failures. Agreed, Lenny, but it also falls on us, filmmakers, critics, consumers, to ensure these narratives spur change, not just reflection. On a brighter note, I think we can all agree that the evolution of cyberpunk aesthetics in the film is nothing short of masterful. It sets a visual and auditory benchmark for future sci-fi endeavors. Absolutely, Mick. And let's not forget the undercurrents of class struggle and corporatism. They're presented with such nuance that it encourages a more engaged discourse on these issues. As we wrap up, it's clear Blade Runner 2049 offers a rich ground for discussion. From AI ethics to environmental concerns, gender representation, and beyond, it challenges us to reflect on the direction of our society. I thank you all for a spirited and enlightening discussion.